So, move this down a little bit. I must say, my favorite city in the world is New York. I just came back there this weekend from a lovely little weekend anniversary getaway with my wife for our anniversary. And I have been to many, many places all over the world. Thank God for this job. It has given me the opportunity to do that time and the money to do it but man still out of any place that I've been to big city wise New York NYC is by far my favorite city in the entire world Advocates, welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Claim Show. I am your host, Vince Perry, licensed and certified public adjuster in the state of Florida, in the state of California, and today I am here to uh, give you some information, some education for any and all of you new public adjusters out there from all over, anywhere from Florida to California to anywhere else in the in the state or in the country. Uh, I'm here to educate you as much as I can. However, let me put my phone on silent first because you know what always happens. So yeah, over here, follow me, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, very into it on, on uh, LinkedIn lately. And um, you just wanna educate you guys as much as I can. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask away. So first, let's get into it. Let's get into it now. Today, we're gonna talk about some of my favorite limits and deadlines that we have on insurance claims. Obviously, there's gonna be a lot more than what I'm gonna say, but these are just a few that I deal with the most. So, it's just, just a few that honestly just came to the top of my head. Did a little bit of research in case I forgot some, but frankly, there's eight different little deadlines and limits that you have to provide information, to give the insurance company a certain amount of days that things have, and uh, it's, just, it's just good for you to know some of these limits. Like I said, these are some of the few that I use the most often, so yeah, so here we go. First one is appraisal request. When I send an appraisal request to the insurance company, on my appraisal re request, it specifically states that they've got 20 days to respond. Um, if they don't respond in 20 days, does anything happen? Not necessarily, but you'll see on some of these deadlines what it does sort of opens them up to a lawsuit, opens them up to a little bit of bad faith, makes them look not, makes the insurance company look like, you know, they're not on top of it the way they should be. Uh, it just reads a little bit. Therefore, within 20 days of receipt of this letter, which is the appraisal letter, please have your appraiser contact me. So 20 days after you send your appraisal request, they need to respond. If they don't, I usually just send it again after seven days if they haven't responded by then. But if they don't, they need to understand that it does open themselves up for a lawsuit if they do not respond. Another one is POL request. This one's a big one. POL is a proof of loss. When the insurance company requests a POL, you've got 60 days to, to submit that. You've got 60 days to put your POL together, send it to the insured, have the insured sign it and notarize it, and then send it back. If you don't, it's one of those case killers. Uh, it's, it's not good. It doesn't look good. You need to make sure that you get that back to them ASAP. You've got 60 days to do it. If you don't, you could get in trouble. Not legally or anything like that, but it's just, it does not, it just doesn't look good for your case. So you need to make sure. POL is requested, 60 days. I know some public adjusters, they submit it on every claim. You can do that. A little bit of extra work that you don't need to do. Uh, or a lot of public adjusters will submit a POL or get a POL signed and notarized as soon as it enters into litigation. That may be good advice. I know of some public adjusters that do it. Honestly, I don't usually do that all the time, but sometimes I just decide to do it anyway. So, um, but the fact is, is once it's requested by the insurance company, there's a handful of insurance companies here that like to ask for it all the time, just to see if that you slip up and you don't actually send it. 60 days, POL request, send it. 60 days, you need to get it in there. If I were you, I'd get it in within 14 days just to make sure that you got it. Um, 14 days for the insurance company to respond. I always like to say to follow up with the insurance company every seven days. I was trained that if the insurance company does not respond within 14 days, again, 
nothing's gonna really happen, but it does open them up for a bad faith lawsuit. By bad faith lawsuit, I mean not necessarily are you going to just file a lawsuit right after 14 days, although I knew I do know attorneys that will want to do that. Just file civil remedy notice as soon as there's no response, which is not something bad to do. Me, I'm the kind of public adjuster that tries to veer away from, from going into litigation, so obviously if they don't respond after 14 days, I will keep trying. However, if in the long term the insurance claim does end up in litigation and they see a list of your emails or your attorney decides, the insurance attorney decides to call them out on something, it could be something that they could be really called out on. Which could say, hey, on this date, public adjuster sent an email, you guys didn't respond until a month later. That's not good because they know when you send something, whether it be you or whether it be the policyholder, it doesn't matter. If you reach out to the insurance company, you should have a response within 14 days. If not, also opens them up for a lawsuit. Another one is the famous 60 day vacancy clause. Here in Florida, the policy states where if a, if a unit, a building or anything is vacant for more than 60 days, that loss is not covered. It is not covered at all. So if you run into a house that's been vacant for, for you know, six months and somebody walks in there and there's a loss, there's water damage or whatever it is, it ain't covered, all right? So if you are unsure whether the house has been vacant for longer or, or no, you're gonna need to try to get some documentation to prove that it's not. So you're gonna have to get some documentation of like a lease agreement, a water bill, an electric bill, something to prove that the house or the building has not been vacant for longer than 60 days. Because if you don't provide them with that proof and the house looks completely empty and it looks vacant or the building looks vacant, you're, you're gonna get that claim denied. And that's, that's no fun. Nobody ever wants to get a claim denied because then it's just gonna take forever to settle it in the long run. So vacancy clause, 60 days, make sure that you are aware of that. Three days to cancel a contract. Uh, I know in some states I think it's five. Here in Florida it's three. Once the insured signs your contract and you are now representing the insured, the insured does have three days to cancel that contract. Uh, I think maybe one time in my 12 year career has anybody actually exercised that. But you know, if you wanna try to explain your contract when you're getting it signed with the homeowner or the building owner, you it might be something you wanna mention, hey, you got three days to cancel. Um, another one is a good one, is constant repeated seepage of water or a leak that lasts for more than 14 days, excluded, not covered in the policy. I'm pretty sure this is throughout the entire country. So if there's been a water leak that has been happening for 14 days, not covered under the insurance policy. It's something you could tell the homeowner or if they show you something, they show you some kind of damage and they start to tell you that it's been happening for a very long time, you need to make them aware. It ain't covered. It's not covered for anything that's been happening for longer than 14 days. So just be aware. Make sure that when you're trying to establish a date of loss and everything that you're just sort of aware of this whole 14 day because like I said, anything that's been happening for longer than that, it's not covered under the insurance policy and uh, will get denied and it will be a tough fight to try to get it proven otherwise. Um, three years to reopen a claim, that is a big one. So here in Florida, it's three years. I know it's different in other states, but here in Florida, it's three years. You have three years to reopen a claim. It's very common. To all you new public adjusters, it's a good sales pitch when you're just starting out and you don't know how to find the new claims, okay? This is a good one. Alert, alert, new public adjusters. One of the things when you're making phone calls to all the people that you know, or you're sending emails to everyone, or you're going to networking events and people ask you, well, what are you looking for? Besides the obvious people who are filing claims and general contractors and roofers and you know strategic referrals, one thing that you could tell them that you're looking for is anybody who's filed a claim within the last three years. If they didn't use a public adjuster, chances are, because it's unfortunate, the insurance companies tend to underpay, uh, chances are if they didn't use a public adjuster or there's no lawsuit, they just filed the claim on their own, you could at least take a look at it and you might have a chance to reopen that claim, dispute that claim, and get more money on top of it. It was my claim to fame when I first started because when I first started, it was in 08, three years after Katrina and Wilma, that was like my main thing. Hey, did you file a hurricane claim? Hey, did you file a hurricane claim? Hey, did you file a hurricane claim? I was reopening claims left and right when I first started. That was probably the main main chunk of my business when I first started was reopening the hurricane claims. Now, for instance, it's three years, then it was five years. Now it's three years and frankly, we are still not at the three year mark for hurricane 
Irma. So if you live in Florida, you could still reopen Irma claims. Also, Michael claims. That's only been two years, so you could still reopen Michael claims as well. So keep that in mind when you're just starting out. If you live in Florida, reopening these hurricane claims is still a good way to get some get some traction and get some moving. And if you live in other places in the country, any kind of storm that we've had, or just in general, just hey, if you file the claim within the last three to five years, depending on your state, you can reopen that claim and you can get a lot more money. So that's kind of cool. That's pretty much all I got today. Yeah, kind of a short video. Um, uh, la, 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 yeah, I can't, I can't think of, I can't think of any more. If you've got any more, please leave them in the comments below. I have a feeling I forgot at least three common ones, and I thought about them over the weekend. I should have wrote them down in my phone, you see. And I was thinking about them now, and those to me are the most, are the most common. So, kind of a shorter video today. I guess if there's some things that I want to share. Follow me on LinkedIn, coming out with a lot of posts. Um, we got the Facebook, we've got the social media going. Uh, like I've been saying, there are some cool things coming up here. Um, but just stay tuned, stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel, okay? We're going to have short clip videos coming out on YouTube a little bit more often. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of stuff on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. And that's it. I'm eternally grateful for all of you and I'm very I'm very humbled by all of the responses that I'm getting in regards to this channel and the information that I'm giving. Um, I'm hope I'm getting to all of you who are asking me for advice and questions and doing the best that I can. And that's pretty much it. I want you guys to have the most spectacular week that you could possibly have. Get out there, hustle, find those claims, sign those claims, settle those claims, get paid, and become successful, okay? Remember, success is not all about money, but it's really nice not to have to worry about it, right? So get out there, make your own schedule, sign those claims, and get after it. Get after it. Have a good week, people. Bye.